Welcome to Computer and Network Security. Today we are going to talk about wireless and mobile security. To start off with wireless security, uh, some of the key factors contributing to the higher security risk that we have with wireless networks compared to wired networks uh, include the channel, mobility, resources, and accessibility. Uh, wireless networking typically involves uh, broadcast communications, which is far more susceptible to eavesdropping and jamming uh, than we have in wired networks, where you actually need access to the physical medium. Uh, mobility, uh, most wireless uh, networking deals with mobility. Uh, some people may have uh, a wireless router at home, and you sit at a desk with your laptop communicating over the wireless network. And this is probably uh, something that you could avoid, and perhaps you should because you can have higher bandwidth, less interference, and uh, more security if you were plugged into the router uh, rather than if you were wireless. The only time that you should use wireless is when uh, you have no other option. Uh, then you should use uh, wireless networking. With resources, uh, some wireless devices such as smartphones, tablets, and others have operating systems but limited memory and processing resources with which to counter threats. And so if you have a denial of service attack or some kind of malware, it's going to be difficult for uh, some wireless devices to combat them. And then the fourth one, accessibility. Some wireless devices may be left unattended in remote and or hostile locations. This is often the case with uh, Department of Defense funded projects, the military, uh, or maybe uh, just an area at home which is uh, insecure. Uh, that could be the case also. So here's just a basic structure of endpoint uh, communicating with some kind of an access point, whether that's a router or not, and you have some medium uh, in the middle. Here's just some terminology uh, for this lecture. Uh, an access point, any entity that has a station, has station functionality, provides access to the distribution system via the wireless medium. Uh, and let's see, the other one, the MAC protocol data unit. The unit of data exchange between two peer MAC entities using the services of the physical layer. And then the one below that, the MAC service data unit, information that's delivered as a unit between uh, MAC users. Those are the, the primary ones. There's a few other ones on there that you should become familiar with, but those are the primary ones that you'll need to know for today's lecture. Uh, with uh, the different threats that we have with wireless networks, you can see here there are eight of them provided on this slide. Uh, some of them are a little bit more obvious than others. Accidental association, uh, when a user intends to connect to one LAN and unintentionally connects to another one. Um, some of you may have experienced this before. I've seen this uh, happen to myself when I'm uh, in a hotel maybe and there's a neighboring hotel that also has a wireless network. Uh, sometimes it's not accidental association, but perhaps the one that's next door to you has uh, an unencrypted network as opposed to a paid network like the hotel that you're in, so then you can connect there as well. Uh, uh, malicious association, a uh, wireless device appear, configured to appear to be a legitimate access point, um, enabling the operator to steal passwords from legitimate users. This uh, could be as simple as setting up an ad hoc network so that when users, let's say, at an airport are looking for a wireless, wireless network uh, to connect to, that they see that there's one that's unencrypted and maybe you even name it like Linksys or Cisco or something like that or the same name as the airport to try to get people to connect to it. And then when they start trying to transmit data uh, through it's going to be coming through your computer. So you actually could be providing them internet access if you're connected to the internet also. And uh, they're just going to be transmitting all of their data through uh, you, not knowing that. That leads us into our ad hoc network, uh, which is a peer-to-peer -peer network between wireless computers that does not have an access point between them. Obviously, this is going to pose a security threat. This is one of the biggest uh, issues, or one of the issues that we have with my area of research in vehicular ad hoc networks is do we allow, uh, how, how can we secure that when a vehicle is communicating with another vehicle that maybe it's just using it to hop through the network to another one uh, that we don't have any security risks or we minimize that as much as possible. 
uh, non-traditional networks, so personal networks, uh, Bluetooth devices, barcode readers, and so on. These especially pose a risk because a lot of times uh, over Bluetooth, the data is unencrypted. So if you happen to be running a packet sniffer and you're in promiscuous mode where you're getting all of the data being transmitted within a, a close vicinity to you, you may be able to um, have a key logger without anybody else knowing about it. So you really need to be careful if you are using a Bluetooth keyboard uh, that you make sure that the data is being encrypted between your keyboard and the computer or the tablet or whatever you may be uh, communicating with from that keyboard. Identity theft with MAC spoofing. Um, an attacker can eavesdrop on a network and identify the MAC address of a computer with network privileges and then just spoof it. Uh, as you uh, know now with the different layers of the OSI model or looking in TCP IP, you would be able to uh, spoof the MAC address, the IP address, and so on, uh, just knowing what the network protocols are that are being used. And so that could be a way to, uh, they call it identity theft. This is not identity theft in the traditional sense of somebody stealing someone else's identity through a social security number or driver license number or something like that. This would be more of just acting like you're somebody else or acting like you're a different computer when you're on a network. Man in the middle attacks. Uh, this attack involves persuading a user and an access point to believe that they're talking to each other when in fact they are talking through you and you are the one who's communicating with the other side. That's called a man in the middle attack. I think we mentioned that a few times through uh, this class already. Denial of service. Uh, we have an entire lecture devoted to denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks uh, coming up relatively soon. So we'll go into more detail on these, but. Uh, this occurs when an attacker bombards a wireless access point or another uh, accessible wireless port with various protocol messages designed to consume system resources. So they're just trying to deny service, whatever the service may be. Maybe this is network access or someone else being able to hit that computer for uh, to get a web page, maybe something like that. You're denying some kind of service. And then the last one, network injection. Uh, this attack targets wireless access points that are exposed to non-filtered network traffic such as routing protocol messages or network management messages, and they just inject uh, different network messages into uh, that specific uh, device. Okay, how do we go about securing wireless transmission? So the principal threats that we have to wireless transmission are eavesdropping, altering, or inserting messages, and then disruption. Um, so to deal with this, there's uh, two types of countermeasures. One of them is a signal hiding technique and the other is encryption. For all of your wireless networks that you all have uh, at home or any of them that you administer, these are going to be very good points for how you can try to secure your own network. Turn off the SSID broadcasting by wireless access points. You can turn this off on your home network. Um, then anyone that's connecting to your network would have to know the SSID to be able to connect to it. This is uh, particularly good with home networks because the people who are going to be authorized to connect to it most likely would have to talk to you first and you would be able to tell them what the SSID is. Uh, different than if you are administering a network at, let's say, uh, a coffee shop or at an airport where you don't want somebody to have to come and tell you exactly or have to come and talk to you before they're able to connect to the network. Uh, the second point is sign cryptic names. Uh, to the SSID, so don't make your network name be Linksys, which is a very common one, but make it something which is more uncommon, uh, possibly with numbers in it and so on, so that it's a little more cryptic, that it's harder for somebody to guess since you're not broadcasting it. Reduce the signal strength to the lowest level that still provides uh, requisite coverage. Uh, this is what a lot of companies or hotels will try to do. Um, and it kind of ties into the fourth point there, locate the wireless access points in the interior of the building away from windows and exterior walls so that you're covering uh, as much of the building as possible or possibly the whole building, but you're not covering that much area outside of the building. Uh, and then encryption, we've talked about encryption uh, a number of times through this class already. Uh, it's important that you make sure that your wireless transmission uh, is going to be encrypted using something. So an older wireless technology would be WEP. Uh, newer ones are WPA, WPA2, uh, PSK2, and so on. So make sure that you are encrypting your wireless network as well. 
so what we well, the, the main thing that we need to do with wireless networks is try to prevent unauthorized access uh, to the network. We have uh, a set of standards, which is the IEEE 802.1x standards. Uh, most of us are probably familiar or at least have seen 802.11. And uh, there's a number of uh, substandards within the 802.11 class, 802.11 A, B, G, N, and uh, those are the, the primary ones. There's other ones also. 802.11 is a very, very extensive set of protocols. You can take a look at them. Uh, one that hopefully is going to be taking off at some point in the future would be 802.11 P, which would be for vehicular communication if you want to take a look at that. Here's uh, just a couple other points for uh, securing a wireless network, make sure that you encrypt, make sure you're using antivirus and anti-spyware software, make sure you have a firewall, we'll have a lecture on firewalls uh, coming up here also. Turn off the SSID broadcasting, change the identifier on your router uh, from the default to something else. Obviously you need to make sure you change your router's preset password for administration. This is extremely important, a lot of people who don't know anything about uh, networks or wireless networks, they come home and it's very nice that it's so easy that you just plug in your uh, router to your modem and you have wireless access in your home. The problem is that uh, it's just staying with all of the defaults and you need to make sure you change those away from admin, admin being your username and password or admin password being uh, the authentication, something like that. Uh, and then also allow only specific computers to access your wireless network. Uh, you can do this at home. There's usually Mac filters that you have inside of even personal routers so you can make sure that only computers that you have the Mac address of and you've entered them into your router are going to be able to access your network. If you have a lot of people coming over uh, who need to use your network, it's going to become a little more burdensome, but most people on their home networks probably have just a set number of devices that are going to be accessing the network. So you can set those MAC addresses so no other device other than those are going to be able to communicate over the network. Even though others may be able to connect, uh, they're not going to be able to communicate because your router is going to drop them uh, and block all of the traffic through once they try to communicate. Uh, mobile devices have become so important and popular uh, that we need to talk about how we have security with mobile devices as well. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have with mobile devices is that they've opened up the need and desire for users to be able to communicate over the internet with uh, mobile devices regardless of where they are. A lot of times it may be over the cellular network, but uh, when you go into other areas with cellular data being more costly than wireless data is, uh, when you go into areas that have Wi-Fi, and a lot of places are now advertising to have free Wi-Fi, uh, that when you do that, you're going to uh, have uh, security risks that you need to make sure are addressed so that your wireless device is able to communicate, but you're also able to communicate securely. So. Um, Due to these changes, organizations' networks must now accommodate the growing use of new devices, cloud-based applications. We're going to talk about the cloud a little bit. Uh, Deperimeterization. So uh, no longer is the perimeter just where the computers are, but now the perimeter could be uh, much further than that. And then external business requirements also. Uh, maybe they need to have people able to access the network from uh, outside of the network itself. Okay, here are some major security concerns for mobile devices. The lack of physical security controls. There are countless mobile devices that uh, they could have been stolen or who knows where this device is coming from. Maybe it's a device that we've never even heard of, but it's able to communicate using 802.11g and that's what the network is using, so it's going to be able to communicate on the network still. So uh, the policies for, for mobile devices uh, may have to be different or uh, there's going to need to be a little bit more uh, interaction between a network administrator with the mobile devices. Use of untrusted mobile devices. Uh, now, the organization must assume not all devices are trustworthy. Use of untrusted networks. Uh, the use of untrusted content. We don't know what these devices are all going to be doing. Use of applications created by unknown parties. It would be impossible to try to keep up on every app that's been created. Uh, especially since we have different platforms now with um, uh, Android, iPhones, Blackberries, and so on. So there's a lot of different applications created by countless different uh, parties. Interaction with other systems. Um, unless an organization has control of all devices involved, 
there's considerable risk of the organization's data being stored in unsecured locations. So often you're going to have a public network separate from a private network, and that would hopefully take care of that problem. And then the use of location services. An attacker can use location information to determine where the device and user are located, which may be of use to the attacker. So um, your network may be exposed, the location of it may be exposed just because you have uh, devices that have location services on them able to communicate on your network. Uh, okay, so here are some mobile device security elements. Uh, the mobile device configuration server, authentication, access control server, obviously we need to have firewalls, application database server. Uh, all of these are things that we need to make sure are secure if we're utilizing mobile devices. Um, usually with uh, mobile devices, we're going to want to encrypt the data using SSL or IPsec. Uh, we could use VPN. VPN is very popular nowadays, especially when connecting to corporate networks. Uh, when you are outside of it, using a VPN tunnel uh, is probably a good way to go about doing that. Then you have all of your data secured back and forth between the device communicating and the corporate network. So we talked, uh, I, I mentioned the 802.11, uh, which is a standard which was brought up by the IEEE. Um, and the 802 committee uh, developed standards for a wide range of local area networks. It was formed in 1990. The 802.11 uh, committee was formed in 1990, and it was chartered to develop a protocol and transmission specifications for wireless LANs, and that's why uh, 802.11, uh, you all may be familiar with that because it's focused specifically on wireless LANs. Obviously, this has exploded in the last decade or two decades with all of the wireless communication, mobile communication that we've had, and then it moved on to cellular communication, which is outside of the 802.11. However, most smartphones support uh, 802.11 communication so that you can communicate over uh, wireless networks. Specifically now, a lot of people like to use the word wireless network interchangeably with Wi-Fi. There is a difference there. Uh, Wi-Fi actually stands for uh, wireless fidelity. The first 802.11 standard to gain this uh, industry acceptance was the 802.11b. And um, so the Wireless Fidelity Alliance creates a te test suite to certify interoperability for the 802.11 product. So not everything that communicates over a wireless network is going to be uh, Wi-Fi, although if you're using 802.11b, g, n, uh, those are all going to be Wi-Fi. So that's why it's uh, used interchangeably a lot of time. Uh, Wi-Fi um, 5 is a certification process for 802.11a products. Um, this is um, a little bit older. We're going to see some more uh, development with Wi-Fi coming out in the uh, next couple of years with higher bandwidth, uh, different frequency ranges, and so on. Um, and so we're going to continue having the Wi-Fi Alliance is going to uh, certify this, or maybe another certifying agency will come out to do that. Okay, so. Um, that gives a nice overview of wireless and mobile security. Make sure you read the papers. I have a number of papers posted for today's lecture. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.